Chapters 3 through 5 of Irenaeus Against Heresies, Book 2. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Irenaeus Against Heresies, Book 2. Translated by Alexander Roberts and W. H. Rambeau. Chapter 3. The Bythus and Pleroma of the Valentinians, as well as the God of Marcion, shown to be absurd. The world was actually created by the same being who had conceived the idea of it, and was not the fruit of defect or ignorance. 1. The Bythus, therefore, whom they conceive of with his Pleroma, and the god of Marcion, are inconsistent. If, indeed, as they affirm, he has something subjacent and beyond himself, which they style vacuity and shadow, this vacuum is then proved to be greater than their pleroma. But it is inconsistent even to make this statement, that while he contains all things within himself, the creation was formed by some other. For it is absolutely necessary that they acknowledge a certain void and chaotic kind of existence, below the spiritual pleroma, in which this universe was formed, and that the propator purposely left this chaos as it was, either knowing beforehand what things were to happen in it, or being ignorant of them. If he was really ignorant, then God will not be prescient of all things. But they will not even in that case be able to assign a reason on what account he thus left this place void during so long a period of time. If again he is prescient, and contemplated mentally that creation which was about to have a being in that place, then he himself created it, who also formed it beforehand ideally in himself. 2. Let them cease, therefore, to affirm that the world was made by any other, for as soon as God formed a conception in his mind, that was also done which he had thus mentally conceived. For it is not possible that one being should mentally form the conception, and another actually produce the things which had been conceived by him in his mind. But God, according to these heretics, mentally conceived either an eternal world or a temporal one, both of which suppositions cannot be true. Yet if he had mentally conceived of it as eternal, spiritual, and visible, it would also have been formed such. But if it was formed such as it really is, then he made it such who had mentally conceived of it as such, or he willed it to exist in the ideality of the Father according to the conception of his mind such as it now is, compound, mutable, and transient. Since then, it is just such as the Father had ideally formed in counsel with himself, it must be worthy of the Father. But to affirm that what was mentally conceived and pre-created by the Father of all, just as it has been actually formed, is the fruit of defect, and the production of ignorance, is to be guilty of great blasphemy. For, according to them, the father of all will thus be regarded as generating in his breast, according to his own mental conception, the emanations of defect and the fruits of ignorance, since the things which he had conceived in his mind have actually been produced. Chapter 4. The absurdity of the supposed vacuum and defect of the heretics is demonstrated. 1. The cause, then, of such a dispensation on the part of God is to be inquired after, but the formation of the world is not to be ascribed to any other. And all things are to be spoken of as having been so prepared by God beforehand that they should be made as they have been made, but shadow and vacuity are not to be conjured into existence. But whence, let me ask, came this vacuity, of which they speak? If it was indeed produced by him who, according to them, is the father and author of all things, then it is both equal in honor and related to the rest of the eons, perchance even more ancient than they are. Moreover, if it proceeded from the same source as they did, it must be similar in nature to him who produced it, as well as to those along with whom it was produced. There will therefore be an absolute necessity, both that the Bythus of whom they speak, along with Saiji, be similar in nature to a vacuum, that is, that he really is a vacuum, and that the rest of the eons, since they are the brothers of vacuity, should also be devoid of substance. 
if on the other hand it has not been thus produced it must have sprang from and been generated by itself and in that case it will be equal in point of age to that bythus who is according to them the father of all and thus vacuity will be of the same nature and of the same honour with him who is according to them the universal father for it must of necessity have been either produced by some one or generated by itself and sprung from itself but if in truth vacuity was produced then its producer valentinus is also a vacuum as are likewise his followers if again it was not produced but was generated by itself then that which is really a vacuum is similar to and the brother of and of the same honour with that father who has been proclaimed by valentinus while it is more ancient and dating its existence from a period greatly anterior and more exalted in honour than the remaining aeons of ptolemy himself and heraclion and all the rest who hold the same opinions two but if driven to despair in regard to these points they confess that the father of all contains all things and that there is nothing whatever outside of the pleroma for it is an absolute necessity that if there be anything outside of it it should be bounded and circumscribed by something greater than itself and that they speak of what is without and what within in reference to knowledge and ignorance and not with respect to local distance but that in the pleroma or in those things which are contained by the father the whole creation which we know to have been formed having been made by the demiurge or by the angels is contained by the unspeakable greatness as the centre is in a circle or as a spot is in a garment then in the first place what sort of a being must that bythus be who allows a stain to have place in his own bosom and permits another one to create or produce within his territory contrary to his own will such a mode of acting would truly entail the charge of degeneracy upon the entire pleroma since it might from the first have cut off that defect and those emanations which derive their origin from it and not have agreed to permit the formation of creation either in ignorance or passion or in defect for he who can afterwards rectify a defect and does as it were wash away a stain could at a much earlier date have taken care that no such stain should even at first be found among his possessions or if at the first he allowed that the things which were made should be as they are since they could not in fact be formed otherwise then it follows that they must always continue in the same condition for how is it possible that those things which cannot at the first obtain rectification should subsequently receive it or how can men say that they are called to perfection when those very beings who are the causes from which men derive their origin either the demiurge himself or the angels are declared to exist in defect and if as is maintained the supreme being inasmuch as he is benignant did at last take pity upon men and bestow on them perfection he ought at first to have pitied those who were the creators of man and to have conferred on them perfection in this way men too would verily have shared in his compassion being formed perfect by those who were perfect for if he pitied the work of these beings he ought long before to have pitied themselves and not to have allowed them to fall into such awful blindness three their talk also about shadow and vacuity in which they maintain that the creation with which we are concerned was formed will be brought to nothing if the things referred to were created within the territory which is contained by the father for if they hold that the light of their father is such that it fills all things which are inside of him and illuminates them all how can any vacuum or shadow possibly exist within that territory which is contained by the pleroma and by the light of the father for in that case it behoves them to point out some place within the propator or within the pleroma which is not illuminated nor kept possession of by any one and in which either the angels or the demiurge formed whatever they pleased nor will it be a small amount of space in which such and so great a creation can be conceived of as having been formed there will therefore be an absolute necessity that within the pleroma 
or within the father of whom they speak they should conceive of some place void formless and full of darkness in which those things were formed which have been formed by such a supposition however the light of their father would incur a reproach as if he could not illuminate and fill those things which are within himself thus then when they maintain that these things were the fruit of defect and the work of error they do moreover introduce defect and error within the pleroma and into the bosom of the father chapter five this world was not formed by any other beings within the territory which is contained by the father one the remarks therefore which i made a little while ago are suitable in answer to those who assert that this world was formed outside of the pleroma or under a good god and such persons with the father they speak of will be quite cut off from that which is outside the pleroma in which at the same time it is necessary that they should finally rest in answer to those again who maintain that this world was formed by certain other beings within that territory which is contained by the father all those points which have now been noticed will present themselves as exhibiting their absurdities and incoherencies and they will be compelled either to acknowledge all those things which are within the father lucid full and energetic or to accuse the light of the father as if he could not illuminate all things or as a portion of their pleroma is so described the whole of it must be confessed to be void chaotic and full of darkness and they accuse all other created things as if these were merely temporal or at the best if eternal yet material but these the eons ought to be regarded as beyond the reach of such accusations since they are within the pleroma or the charges in question will equally fall against the entire pleroma and thus the christ of whom they speak is discovered to be the author of ignorance for according to their statements when he had given a form so far as substance was concerned to the mother they conceive of he cast her outside of the pleroma that is he cut her off from knowledge he therefore who separated her from knowledge did in reality produce ignorance in her how then could the very same person bestow the gift of knowledge on the rest of the eons those who were anterior to him in production and yet be the author of ignorance to his mother for he placed her beyond the pale of knowledge when he cast her outside of the pleroma. 2. Moreover, if they explain being within and without the pleroma as implying knowledge and ignorance respectively, as certain of them do, since he who has knowledge is within that which knows, then they must of necessity grant that the Saviour himself, whom they designate all things, was in a state of ignorance for they maintain that on his coming forth outside of the pleroma he imparted form to their mother akamoth if then they assert that whatever is outside the pleroma is ignorant of all things and if the saviour went forth to impart form to their mother then he was situated beyond the pale of the knowledge of all things that is he was in ignorance how then could he communicate knowledge to her when he himself was beyond the pale of knowledge for we too they declare to be outside the pleroma inasmuch as we are outside of the knowledge which they possess and once more if the saviour really went forth beyond the pleroma to seek after the sheep which was lost but the pleroma is coextensive with knowledge then he placed himself beyond the pale of knowledge that is in ignorance for it is necessary either that they grant that what is outside the pleroma is so in a local sense in which case all the remarks formerly made will rise up against them or if they speak of that which is within in regard to knowledge and of that which is without in respect to ignorance then their saviour and christ long before him must have been formed in ignorance inasmuch as they went forth beyond the pleroma that is beyond the pale of knowledge in order to impart form to their mother three these arguments may in like manner be adapted to meet the case of all those who in any way maintain that the world was formed either by angels or by any other one than the true god for the charges which they bring against the demiurge and those things which were made material and temporal 
will in truth fall back on the father if indeed the very things which were formed in the bosom of the pleroma began by and by in fact to be dissolved in accordance with the permission and good will of the father the immediate creator then is not the real author of this work thinking as he did that he formed it very good but he who allows and approves of the productions of defect and the works of error having a place among his own possessions and that temporal things should be mixed up with eternal corruptible with incorruptible and those which partake of error with those which belong to truth if however these things were formed without the permission or approbation of the father of all then that being must be more powerful stronger and more kingly who made these things within a territory which properly belongs to him the father and did so without his permission if again as some say their father permitted these things without approving of them, then he gave the permission on account of some necessity, being either able to prevent such procedure or not able. But if indeed he could not hinder it, then he is weak and powerless, while if he could, he is a seducer, a hypocrite, and a slave of necessity, inasmuch as he does not consent to such a course, and yet allows it as if he did consent and allowing error to arise at the first and to go on increasing he endeavours in later times to destroy it when already many have miserably perished on account of the original defect for it is not seemly however to say of him who is god over all since he is free and independent that he was a slave to necessity or that anything takes place with his permission yet against his desire otherwise they will make necessity greater and more kingly than god since that which has the most power is superior to all others and he ought at the very beginning to have cut off the causes of the fancied necessity and not to have allowed himself to be shut up to yielding to that necessity by permitting anything besides that which became him for it would have been much better more consistent and more godlike to cut off at the beginning the principle of this kind of necessity, then afterwards, as if moved by repentance, to endeavor to extirpate the results of necessity when they had reached such a development. And if the father of all be a slave to necessity, and must yield to fate, while he unwillingly tolerates the things which are done, but is at the same time powerless to do anything in opposition to necessity and fate, like the Homeric Jupiter, who says of necessity, I have willingly given thee, yet with unwilling mind, then, according to this reasoning, the Bythus of whom they speak will be found to be the slave of necessity and fate. End of Book 2, Chapters 3-5